हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन इन फिशेज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ एक्टिव रेगुलेशन ऑफ द ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स बॉडी फ्लूड्स बाई कंट्रोलिंग इट्स वाटर एंड सॉल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन द मेन पर्पज ऑफ ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन इज टू मेंटेन द होमियोस्टेस ऑफ द बॉडी फ्लूड्स विच मीन्स दैट इट चेक्स द ऑर्गेनिजम्स बॉडी फ्लूड्स फ्रॉम बिकमिंग टू डायल्यूटेड और टू कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सो बिफोर टेकिंग अप आवर मेन टॉपिक यू मस्ट फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ आइसोटोनिक हाइपोटोनिक एंड हाइपोटोनिक कंडीशन यू ऑल मोस्ट ऑफ यू मस्ट बी नोइंग इट ऑलरेडी सो हेयर इन दिस डायग्राम दीज कंडीशन दे आर डिपेक्टेड इन कंटेक्स टू द आर बी सीज सो इफ वी प्लेस अ आर बी सी इन अ हाइपोटोनिक सोल्यूशन विच मीन्स दैट द आउटसाइड सोल्यूशन इट हैज लेस salt concentration in comparison to the inside of the rbc so in this case endosmosis it occurs which means that from outside the water it starts flowing uh, inside or towards uh, inner side of the rbc but if we place this rbc in a hypotonic solution where the salt concentration is more outside in comparison to the inside so here occurs the exosmosis in which water it starts flowing from inside of the cell towards the outside but if uh, this rbc is placed in a isotonic solution where the salt concentration is equal outside as well as the inside of the cell so this exosmosis and the endosmosis these processes they are neutralized so uh, keeping in mind these um, uh, iso hypo and hypotonic uh, this basic uh, concept uh, let us start our main topic which is osmo regulation in case of the fishes so first of all the main osmo regulatory organ in all fishes is kidney but apart from kidney gills or the gill membrane it also helps in the process of osmo regulation so first of all let us uh, um, take a look at the process of osmo regulation in case of the fresh water fishes means the fishes which live in the rivers ponds or lakes uh, which are most of the bony fishes for example labio catla mistus etc uh, these fishes they live in the hypotonic environment which means that their body fluids they have have comparatively more salt concentration in comparison to the surrounding fresh water so these fishes they face two basic problems the first is the problem of the endosmosis endosmosis means the water from the outer uh, environment it continuously flows or it diffuses uh, into the body basically through the skin and the gill membrane uh, and apart from that um, the ions basically the sodium chlorine uh, uh, such ions they continuously diffuse out from the body into the outer environment as the salt concentration is less in the outer water so to tackle these problems uh, the how the osmo regulation it occurs in case of these fresh water bony fishes uh so for uh, to um, uh, tackle the problem of the uh, endosmosis these fishes they produce large quantity of the dilute urine uh so uh, for this these fishes in their kidneys uh, the nephrons they have large glomeruli glomerulus is the uh, is the network capillary network present in the Uh, nephrons uh, uh, from which by the process of ultra filtration the primary urine is formed and it enters in the nephron this primary urine is also termed as a glomerular filtrate so due to presence of the large glomerulus lot of primary urine or the glomerular filtrate is formed in the nephrons of the kidneys and uh, when uh, this uh, glomerular filtrate it enters in the next part of the uh, nephron the pct or the dct here this this part of the or this segment of the nephron uh, it uh, acts uh, in salt reabsorption from the glomerular filtrate salt reabsorption means the salts which are present in this glomerular filtrate they are reabsorbed from the nephron 
back into the blood means the salts they are not excreted out in the urine and they are retained in the body so the urine which is formed in these fishes it is dilute and it basically consists of lot of water and only its nitrogenous phase which is ammonia in case of all bony fishes and it uh, salts they are not lost in the urine so uh, next um, these fishes they do not drink water apart from that to um, uh, to compensate for the loss of salts in these fishes they actively uptake the salts from the surrounding water um, uh, with help of special cells which are termed as inocytes or the chloride cells which are present in its gills uh, these inocytes or the chloride cells they um, uh, by using energy they pick up the salts from the outside water um, against the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient means ki jaise already bahar ke pani mein uh, कम सॉल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन है फिर भी एनर्जी का यूज़ करके ये जो आइनोसाइट्स हैं दे वो बाहर से सॉल्ट्स को सोडियम क्लोरीन पोटाशियम इन सॉल्ट्स को वो बाहर से अंदर की तरफ को अप, जो है वो अपटेक करेंगे बॉडी के अंदर वो अपटेक करेंगे सो दी दिस इज़ अ मैकेनिज्म ऑफ फॉस्मो रेगुलेशन इन केस ऑफ द फ्रेश वाटर फिशेज एंड हेयर इज दिस कंसोलीडेटेड डायग्राम शोइंग ऑल दिस प्रोसेस विच वी जस्ट इट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट द प्रॉब्लम्स फेस्ड बाई दिस फिशेज विच इज ऑफ the uh, endosmosis uh, water it enters through its general body surface into the body and the loss of the ions uh, so uh, and these fishes they do not drink water the salt and the water which enters uh, into the body is uh, uh, only through the food uh, and these fishes they produce lot of dilute urine and they actively uptake the ions through their gills so this is the osmoregulation in case of the fresh water fishes and next is osmoregulation in case of the marine fishes uh, which are present in the hypertonic environment means their body fluids they have less salt concentration in comparison to the surrounding water and these fishes they face exact opposite problems which we just did in case of the fresh water fish which is first is of the exosmosis means water it continuously diffuses out of the fishes body into the surrounding water and uh, other is that salts they diffuse from the surrounding sea water into the fishes body as the salt concentration is more outside in comparison to the inside so uh, uh, this marine water osmoregulation mechanism in marine water fishes is different for the mar uh, marine water bony fishes and the marine water cartilaginous fishes first of all we'll take a take a look um, in case of the bony fishes which lives in the marine water for example the hilsa exocetus and these fishes um the bony fishes which live in the marine water in these fishes the osmoregulatory mechanism is again exactly opposite which we just did in the fresh water bony fishes so these fishes they produce less quantity of the concentrated urine uh, and for that their glomerular glomerulus which is uh, uh, present in their uh, kidney tubules they are uh, this glomerulus they, uh, they are small which filter out very less water in the glomerular filtrate and um, in these fishes the salts are not reabsorbed from the glomerular filtrate and most of salts they are excreted out in the urine so the salt which enter into the body uh, they are excreted most of the salts they are excreted out in the urine so their urine it has water the nitrogenous phase which is ammonia as well as lot of salt uh, um, is present in their urine and these fishes unlike the freshwater fishes they uh, they drink lot of sea water to compensate for the loss of the water by the exosmosis but uh, due to this the salt concentration in their body fluids it increases even more uh, so this uh, increased salt uh, is excreted out uh, in the urine as well as for excretion of this excess salt Uh, these fishes they have again inocytes or the chloride cells which are special cells in their gills but here these cells they uh, they actively excrete the excess of the salts into the outer environment so uh, here is the diagram showing 
uh, this whole process of osmoregulation in case of the marine water bony fishes uh, which uh, uh, face the problem of the exoosmosis and the uh, salt diffusion into the body. Uh, these fishes they drink lot of water and they produce concentrated salty urine, the urine it has lot of salts and they actively excrete the uh, salts through their gills. So, uh, this is uh, in case of the marine water bony fishes and uh, last is the ex uh, osmoregulation in case of the marine water cartilaginous fishes which are most of the cartilaginous fishes including sharks, rays. So, uh, the cartilaginous fishes unlike the uh, bony fishes, these fishes they have solved the problem of the water loss by raising the concentration of their body fluids. This means that these cartilaginous fishes increase their body fluid ka concentration ko increase kar leti hai and their body fluid now it becomes isotonic to the sea water. Ki jitna salt, jitna concentration sea water ka hai, uske same unka body fluid ka concentration ho jayega. To there won't be any exoosmosis or endoosmosis. Uh, and uh, but he, these fishes they do not. Uh, uh, increase their body fluid salt concentration by retaining the salt. Wo salt ko retain nahi karenge body mein. Rather they retain the large quantity of the urea in their body fluids. Urea which is the nitrogenous excretory weight in case, uh, waste in case of the cartilaginous fishes. These cartilaginous fishes they are ureotelic organisms. So, they, uh, this urea is not excreted out rather it is retained in the body fluids and this is done by first the synthesis of lot of urea in all body tissues and then this urea uh, in the uh, kidney tubules after ultra filtration when it comes in the uh, glomerular filtrate uh, in this uh, these segments of the uh, kidney nephrons this urea is absorbed this urea is reabsorbed or absorbed from the glomerular filtrate into the blood means this urea is not excreted out rather it is a nitrogenous waste but it is not excreted in the urine so their urine it contains water and salts only the salt is not reabsorbed in the kidney tubules salt ka reabsorption nahi hoga salt jo honge jo bhi sodium calcium um, uh, potassium jo bhi extra salts honge uh, they are excreted out in the urine but urea is not excreted out urea is retained in the body uh, or in the body fluids but this retention of the urea in the body fluid it poses a problem as this urea it destabilizes many enzymes so to solve this problem the, uh, uh, these fishes they also retain another osmolite which is trimethyl amine oxide or TMAO. Uh, this TMAO this osmolite is excreted out in most of the organism but th these fishes they retain it in the body as this uh, osmolite it inhibits the effect of urea on the enzyme. So this solves this problem. And moreover, these uh, cartilaginous fishes, they also do not drink any uh, sea water. So, here is the diagram depicting this osmoregulation in case of the marine water cartilaginous fishes uh, in which we saw that urea and TMAO is retained in the body to uh, make the uh, uh, to increase uh, the body fluids concentration and now the body fluid is isotonic to the outer environment so there won't be any exoosmosis or the loss of uh, salt or loss of water uh, or entry of the salts into the body their uh, urine it uh, contain lot of salt it do not have any urea uh, and uh, it the, these fishes they do not drink water uh, only little uh, water or salt they enter into the body through the gills so this is all about osmoregulation in case of fishes in which we did osmoregulation in three parts first is osmoregulation in case of the freshwater fishes then we did osmoregulation in case of the marine water bony fishes and lastly we did the osmoregulation in case of the marine water cartilaginous fishes so that is all for today's lecture i hope you understood it well thank you so much